The College of Engineering of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology had a talk with Dr. Thomas Mensa, a renowned scientist and inventor with seven USA and worldwide patents in fiber optics and nanotechnology at the Engineering Auditorium on the 23rd of November 2017. Speaking at the program, Dr. Thomas Mensa talked about his life, his achievements, which included being the first black to win the National Academy of Inventors Awards. Of the National Academy of Inventors, I wear this thing all the time. I wear it tomorrow. You are three people black are out of 167. That's a big deal. And over here is the guy who oversees Patrick for the entire United States. So you come up. He had the projector on the big screen and they pin it on. Well, everybody here and the entire university has been impacted, as a matter of fact, the whole world has been impacted by the innovations that have been involved in. So when you are sending a tweet, sending a Facebook picture or Snapchat, you are using an innovation that I was one of the foremost pioneering inventors of coming out of here. I used to sit in the same place, walk in the same places as you do. Dress like you, I used to be like that. And his books, which included Superconductor Engineering, The Why Stuff Comes in Black, and his recent book, Nanotechnology Commercialization. I have four books on innovation. So I'm not just coming here and saying, oh, he's a, he's a nobody. I have four books on innovation. The first is called Fab Optics Engineering. That I've authored and written. They're all white boys and Chinese, they're going to read it. The next one is Superconductor Engineering. Superconductor Engineering talks about everything from uh, what we call maglev technology, which is the next generation has been real using magnets that levitates, you know, the train doesn't even touch the rail, it just levitates and fly two or three inches above the rail. Talked about that in the book. My, my, my third book is this. The right star, you remember we talked about that? Comes in black too. So this is an international book, it will be all over the place. And this is a nanotechnology commercialization book. My idea of doing this when no white person I thought about was, hey, if I have fiber optics, from lab into industry and globalization, I can do the same for the new field of nanotechnology. That's why I wrote this book. I'm the chief editor the chief of that book. In other words, I select whose name can be on the book. And out of four people on the book, I have Ben Wan, who is the VP of manufacturing at Georgia Tech. He's a Chinese scientist or engineer. So I decide who can be on the book. The book you see there on nanotechnology commercialization is the only textbook, international textbook, on nanotechnology written by an alum, a, a, a alumnus of this school from Katanga. He further spoke about a proposal he has presented to the president, His Excellency Nana Akufu Addo, on his vision to build a bullet train which runs at 230 miles per hour, and that partnering with the Chinese government is the best option. Don't put it in it's never done anyway. So you have this design and I'll step quickly through it in the, in the interest of time. Ethiopia has built this by the Chinese. That's why I'm asking God to build this with the Chinese. They give us 19 billion for outside, they can build it for us. The college presented a drone they manufactured to Dr. Thomas Mensah, which he expressed his admiration and also advised that the lecturers should guide the students and the students should work hard as well. TV interview Dr. Thomas Mensah. Good afternoon. You actually talked about 
the fact that you want to build this bullet train in Ghana, but we all know that in Ghana the railroad system is actually poor. So what measures are you and your team putting in place to ensure that that is so? Well, uh, we hope going to build a whole new railroad system. It has nothing to do with the existing railway. Whole new one. The Chinese have built these bullet and trains, Shinkansen. They've built 40 of it in China. So we have a new group that's going to lay out a whole re new railway line. You know? And the Japanese have this railway line, as I said, 45 years without a single accident. So the current railway system that going 20 miles an hour and is derailing, oh, that's why we're going to touch that. So we're going to have engineers from China, they're going to be here, and they're going to work with Ghanaian, UST engineers, and other engineers from other places, mechanical, aerospace, to build this train. They'll bring it here and assemble it right here, so they will learn from it, so that when we need to fix a, something, uh, a rail, they can do it right here without calling Japan or China. So it's a whole new, we are talking at the president's level, we are talking to the sector ministers, we're going to make it happen. Okay, and uh, you have actually achieved a lot in your field. What are some of the challenges you faced when you were coming up in all these achievements? Well, there's going to be challenges for you, especially if you're a black person, you know. Uh, but I've always either worked so hard when they see what I'm doing, it's superior. So the color goes out of it. I've written four books. I've authored four books in innovation. So they look at it, even the white boys don't have four books on innovation. This is a guy. Especially a book on nanotechnology, commercialization, which is the, the uh, international textbook. So once you do something that's so incredible, you know, color and discrimination kind of falls off. You know, I, I did experience this a little bit. When I'm solving the fiber optics problem and I know they know that I'm the only one that can solve it, they don't care about my color. So you got to be superior. You got to do it so well so that they just say, hi, ah, Dr. Mensah, he got to do it and let your results show other people. That's very, very important. You know, with what I did, the whole world is using social media now. You can get on internet that fast because of my inventions. And that has extended the global reach of the internet platform, coming to Africa, China, everywhere, using submarine cables. All that, those are my patents and inventions. They are based on those patents. So you can do it. You're from tech. You can do it. The tech boys and girls, you can do it. All right. Sure. Thank you very much. We hope to see you more in Ghana. The provost of the College of Engineering, Professor Mac Adum Asamoah, spoke to Tech TV. Um, I first got in touch with um, Dr. Mensah in 2012 when I left the shores of KN UST as a Fulbright Fellow. Um, Fulbright Fellowship is one of the most prestigious awards in academia. And um, when I got such an award, I went to Georgia Institute of Technology to do research for one year. And the moment I got to Atlanta, I was able to get into contact with Dr. Mensa, and we started collaboration from that point. Because I also got to know that he is an alumnus of this great university. And it was very important for us to link him up. Currently, he has linked us up with the um, vice um, president of Boeing, and we are bringing Boeing to KNUST to come and help us train our students in aeronautical engineering. We are also looking at other um, companies. He's talking about um, Coca-Cola and other international um, companies, and we hope that this collaboration is going to continue and is going to enhance both our student training and also the image of Ghana as a nation. Sure, thank you very much. Tech TV also interacted with some of the students. How do you actually feel about today's lectures? How do you see everything? All right, first of all, we want to say that today has really opened up the doors for KNUST and the whole of engineering to actually move forward. We believe that as an engineering, um, let's say discipline, we want to make sure that things are moving on well in this country. And we represent how we want things to be like. For the Thomas Mensa to make it to KNUST today is really a pleasure. It's really something that we want to hold on to for the next years to come. And for the things he has taught us today, we believe that we can move the country forward in the next years to come. 
um, anything you actually learned from today's lectures that you would like to share with our viewers? All right. So um, basically, we have learned that um, no matter how small the dream is, we can move it to become very big. And then we want to say that um, the entire student population is happy about that. The entire student population wants us to mature in that particular manner. And for us to have him to come and tell us to mature our dreams to that particular position is really an honor for us. And we are very grateful. I'm sure having an honored person here today to teach you what he has done and then to encourage you is something big on your part as executive. So what are you actually doing to ensure that it is not just a one-time thing, but it's a continual something that would actually encourage the engineering students? All right, for Dr. Menza to come here today, we have already said that is an honor. But then one thing we want to take from this is that we want people to come and give us a platform. Very soon we will launch a Maker's Fair. We want people to come around and come and support GISA so we can move engineering more forward with innovation and creativity. So Maker's Fair will be launched next semester. We want people to come inside and come and help us to achieve what we want to achieve. All right, sure. Thank you very much.